Hi friends, welcome back for another little travel solo exploration vlog. I am currently checking out of St. Michael's and it is humid. <laughs> in case you missed the last vlog, I just spent three nights in St. Michael's, um, Maryland, and I am leaving, but my flight is tonight. So I was researching places to do a little day trip and I think I've decided on Annapolis because it is the little historic town just right outside of Baltimore. My flight is out of Baltimore tonight, so I'm gonna take y'all along for a single day solo exploration vlog of Annapolis. I feel like it's a recurring theme that in my solo vlogs, I try to seek out a celiac safe donut, and I think I found one. There's a spot, there's a few locations called the Sandy Pony. I was Googling it and I was like, the salty horse. No, 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 that's not it. It's the Sandy Pony and they have gluten-free donuts. And I called them this morning and asked, are those fried separate from the other donuts? And they said, yes. So I think it's like 7, 7.30 AM right now. It's about an hour drive from here. I think that's our breakfast. And then we figure out the rest of our day from there. Let's go. Well, I picked up my donuts. They fry them fresh. And then she even was like, was this an allergy? Cause I'll dip them separate. And I was like, yeah, celiac. Um, but it's like in a strip center. So I wanted to take it somewhere scenic to eat it. So I just like Googled park and came here. Quiet Waters Park. It looks like there's like a ton of almost kind of like walking, hiking trails that feed out to the water. So I don't know, let's just walk and see if we can find somewhere really pretty to sit. Um, it's dog friendly too and normally it's eight dollars per entry but today there's a sign that said we're closed the pavilion so please just come on in <laughs> i was like okay cool i guess i'm just gonna walk this way this way has a sign that says boat rental so i assume if i walk far enough i'll hit the water because boats are on water <laughs> i can't believe i lucked into this picnic place um complete isolation except for that one very loud boat that i've been waiting to Get far enough to where you can't hear it for quite a while. <laughs> oh, oh, it's speeding up. Bye boat. So the employee told me that the safest would be the classic donuts because there's no cross contamination. So I got a regular glazed, a glazed cinnamon sugar, and a powdered sugar. And no napkins, I forgot that, but it's okay. We're gonna give this a taste test. The fact that it's actually fried is a huge plus and very hard to find that safe for celiac. Mm, very good. Nowhere near the ones I had in Boston. I don't think anyone will ever beat the ones I had in Boston. I'll try a bite of each of them. Instead of a sugar. Yeah, it's like a cherub. This one's gonna be messy. All in all, out of all the gluten-free donuts I've had, I'd rank these third. I would say first is Boston, second is the place in Maui, third of these. Um, here's what I'm thinking your plan should be. You want a rundown? Okay. This is, this is what I'm thinking. I'm thinking, first we go to the Maritime Museum. I learned in St. Michael's so that typically has some of the coolest water views, which is like my favorite thing. Um, and maybe there's like a boat or something that we could see. That opens at 10, which it's almost 10 right now. Then I say we find lunch. Then I say we walk the historic downtown, kind of see the shops, maybe find a coffee and explore more of the architecture. Let's go. Oh, also pardon the fact I'm in my airport clothes because I just going all day until we get in a plane. Parking and navigating Annapolis is a little tricky, but we got to the Maritime Museum. Oh, $7 here. The one in St. Michael's was like 18 for an adult admission. Okay, let's see what it's like. So this whole museum is about the oystering industry and the building was one of the big oystering um, like facilities back I think in the 1800s. And so there's actual like live aquarium things that you can see to learn about oysters and how the environment affects them. Today I learned that a single oyster filters 50 gallons of water a day per oyster. And this is an example of how the water changed over the years. So this was the water here in the Chesapeake Bay in the 1600s, 1700s, 1800s, when people started oystering and like taking them out. 
1900s, it got really bad, and then efforts to start cleaning it up in the 2000s, the water's kind of like this nowadays, but isn't that? I had no idea that oysters literally filter water. This is the name of what it used to be, the McNasby's Seafood and Oyster Co. And apparently there's also a VR experience to canoe ride or sailboat race. Kind of tempting. I'm now out on the docks and it looks like they might have this set up for events from time to time, which now I want to host an event here of some sort. That would be awesome. Or like a very small wedding. If you're wedding hunting, venue hunting on the east side, you should call them. This would be, look at how cool. Look at, look at the boats. That would be awesome. And here's the Annapolis Maritime Museum sailboat, which I think that according to the little video I just watched, I think that they take students out on this and teach them to sail. There's a look at that. One last time. Any brides to be. <laughs> also, there's an art museum um, as part of this. And there is a house cat named Big Mac that comes and gives you cuddles while you watch the little five minute documentary and look at the art. I got a couple of clips of him. He's the cherry on top. Made the full experience. I'm watching all the sailboats go out in a perfect line. You see them? Also, there's a bride here now talking through her wedding plans. I said that 10 minutes ago. Let's get lost together. Let's go chase that postcard. Wish you were here together. Let's get lost together. Cause if we don't, I know that I won't even last another year. We've made it to downtown Annapolis. I want to say my brain wants to say Annapolis and my mouth wants to say Annapolis. <laughs> it's 11.30. I, I feel like it's going to be a while until I'm hungry for lunch after those three donuts. So I figured we would walk around. This is the capital of Maryland. I didn't know that. I should know my capitals. I don't. Um, but I am parked in the like little shopping area. What street am I on? I'm on Francis Street. And it seems like all the little main streets come around a circle with the state house in the center of the circle. So I thought it could be good walking, see the state house. Apparently there's a cool church called St. Anne's Church, which is historic. And these are like cobblestone streets. So very quaint and cute. And we can just see what we see. Here's what the streets look like just lined with shops and this old kind of brick kind of cobblestone in the center and I think that little pointy chapel might be the state house or the church I don't know probably a church churches have chapels let's go see all right well we found the government house of the state of Maryland the governor's residence and it looks like this it has exquisite sure. landscaping <laughs> and very cute wreaths on the door and here is the official state house with the columns. I'm officially so hot, dripping in sweat. Still not yet ready for lunch, but I found a juice shop called Raza, R-A-S-A juice shop, and it's in a little house. It looks so cute. And I say, let's go get some hydration. Okay, I just looked behind me and realized that I look like I'm in like, I don't know, the UK or something. I've never been to the UK, so actually I wouldn't be able to tell you just kind of what I imagine it to feel like. But apparently I just circled the state house and this juice shop is on the other side of the state house, right this way. All right, I found it and it looks absolutely adorable and it's next door to a local fair trade, handmade, artisanal, eco-friendly little shop. So I say let's, let's do them both. That shop was so cute. I got my mom some earrings and I became 
friends with the owner. She's young, she's cute, and we got to talking. And she told me she's from Oklahoma, and I told her I'm visiting Oklahoma soon for the first time. She was like, why? I was like, oh, I'm tagging along on my boyfriend's tour. She was like, who's your boyfriend? I told her, she's like, oh my gosh, he's on our playlist. So then we got to talking for a long time. And I asked her if she had any lunch recommendations. I told her, but I'm gluten-free. And she's like, I'm gluten-free. My favorite spot's Preserve, which I was actually kind of already looking into. She's like, they have the best kombucha and they denote gluten-free. So I say, let's go do that for lunch. So I'm at Preserve. Apparently they're known for pickling things. So I went ahead and got their little like pickle appetizer sampler. There's carrots and peppers and regular pickles. But the atmosphere in here is very cute. Unfortunately, they are out of their kombucha today, but that's okay. Let's give it a taste. My body is like begging me for some greens and some protein, so we got both and I'm very happy about it. That'd be fun to walk to the main harbor and this is what it looks like. It's cool because the boats can like basically come dock right in front of shops, which is very handy. This is your little reminder that even if you can't take a solo trip and you want to just take a day and walk around your own town alone, I encourage it because it is so freeing to just wonder and not have to worry about what anyone else thinks or wants to do. Um, it's a different level of freeing. It's 2 p.m. It's time to hunt out some coffee and I found a spot called Ceremony Coffee. It's out of like the downtown area. It's about a 10 minute drive which leads me to believe it's probably less touristy <laughs> so it's probably better coffee is my guess so let's take a little drive my meter is up right now which that timing works out really well and let's go try to find some good coffee if you're visiting this coffee shop is very tucked away but they roast their own beans and they roast so many different types and honestly y'all know i'm strict if you watch my other vlogs when I grade lattes, none of them has ever gotten a 10, just for reference, because I don't, I don't know, I guess I'll know when I get a 10, but this, this has to be at least a nine, maybe nine and a half. It's rich, it's creamy, it's chocolatey, it almost is kind of like cookie-ish. Love it. And I'm gonna try to fit in one last scenic thing at least. We'll see how much time it takes before I have to go to the airport. Um, and I just found a park that is on like the very, very point of a little peninsula. Peninsula Point Park. Let me look up the name of it. I gotta get my car keys and I will let you know what it's called. And we'll go. It is called Thomas Point Park. It's about 15 minutes from here, but look. So this is where we are. And look, it's all the way down here. I'm gonna try to do this without looking at my own phone. Oh, this is proving to be hard. Okay, we're zooming. Are we zooming? Why am I making this? I'm challenging on myself. <laughs> Basically, there's this little green space at the end of like a neighborhood, and I have no idea if it's pretty or not, but I imagine that would be okay. I give up. Cool to see. Let's see it in real life, not on my backwards map screen for <laughs> me. Okay, here's the thing. I drove and drove and drove down this dirt road and I'm only halfway down the peninsula. And there's no, every single slight turn off had a sign that says don't park here. And then I found this parking lot, which is awesome, except for it has these signs that say permit parking only. And then the road stops and it says you have to be a, a monthly vehicle permit to go any further. But I do really wanna like just see what the views are from here. So I think my only option is to turn on my hazards and like sprint and go see what we can see. I did pass a dinosaur on the way over here. Uh, here's a little clip if I remember to send it to Tara. Tara, remind me please if I forget. And uh, yeah, this little log cabin, wood cabin, is very cute. It feels like a little fairy tale forest vibe. Okay, let's go turn on my hazards and run and see what we can see. This is pretty worth it. It's just a big old open body of water, but by far the most like secluded body of water I've been able to find. Um, everything else has been like pretty populated thus far. Can I go down here? Oh, I'm going. She's going. Ooh, okay. Yep. <gasps> wow. 
I'm glad we, we sought out one more scenic thing for the day. Well guys, with that, it's time for me to head back to Baltimore, drop off the rental car that I moved to be able to see this new location, <laughs> and uh, fly back to Austin. So I need to go ahead and end the vlog here. There's a big mosquito chasing me. That's a big boy. That's a Okay, but thank you for exploring and adventuring. This, honestly, this last day was kind of on a whim. I didn't know if I was gonna spend today in St. Michael's or if I should explore a new area. And I was like, if I could explore a new area and then make a whole nother video with y'all, that'd be very fun and very worth it. And I'm really glad I did. Annapolis is cute. I like it. I think St. Michael's is my favorite out of the two if you're looking for a spot in Maryland to visit too. It's just very quaint and picturesque, but Annapolis is awesome also, and easier to get to from an airport. So pros and cons to both, but I love you. Thanks for exploring with me. I hope you have the best rest of your day. And I will see you in another video very soon. Oh my gosh, it's raining. Okay, bye. So give me a sign. Give me a sign. Oh, give me a sign. Baby, give me a sign. Just give me one more. Talking to you. Here we go again. Staying up all night to see if you've been texting me. Where do we go from here?